Hello, welcome to another devlog about the transferable class skills jam game that I am making at the moment. Um, I have um, been, I have not been working on it very much for the last couple of days. Uh, I had a bunch of other stuff to do. Um, but the work that I have done has been a little bit frustrated. My plans have been frustrated. I wanted to, I, I talked last time about the sort of the system of uh, getting a job and working through the job, I think. So I won't go into too much detail, but my, my plan was to write up the, the core of the game, a sort of a vertical slice almost, that um, you have to get these jobs and each job comes with events that happen on different days, problems that you have to solve. You can you can lose that job or be successful at it to an extent. And that was my focus. Uh, and I've done some of that, but I realized fairly quickly a uh, problem which I was having, which is that without knowing really clearly all of the um, abilities and skills that a character can have, and also without knowing the, the approximate kind of starting level that a character is going to be, what the... What the probable levels of those different skills will be at the beginning of the game. I just couldn't write those those problems and the solutions to them. So I, I did what I didn't want to do, which was flesh out character creation, like complete the character creation thing, uh, so that I know all of the skills that are available, the possible values that they have. Um, I didn't want to do that because although it's necessary, it's the beginning of the game, it's not the main thing of the game, it's the introduction. Uh, but I went back and uh, did that. I also encountered some bugs with ink which have been a bit annoying. I lost a bunch of time today because of that, but um, solved it eventually. So let's, uh, let's take a look at character creation. Um, yeah, I've got a little bit of programmer art here, probably final art, let's be honest. Uh, it was on the the thumbnail of the last video, too. So, character creation. This is how the game starts. Um, I showed this last time, but it was very bare bones. Um, choose your race. There are three different races. Let's get to human. You're a human, stat increased, intelligence, blah, blah, blah. Choose uh, two new skills. Uh, let's go for medicine. You learnt early how to bind a womb and wound and prepare a poultice. Skills which should serve you well on your adventures. Let's go for swimming. You gained an ability, a skill, swimming. You grew up by the water and water was your playground from a very young age. So uh, yeah, I've, I've put in all of the skills. They've all got descriptions. They have different descriptions depending on whether you learn them when you grow up or when you get them later. Um, this screen here with um you know with um it's got a lot of information in it now and a lot of repetition and i think it's quite hard to pass um you gain your skill in medicine blah 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 like so um where my 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 plan is and i kind of had this from the beginning was that to get a bunch of formatting in here to to use colors and text formatting to distinguish skills and abilities and stats and, and things. Uh, I still plan on doing that, but it's it's way at the end of the project. It's it's not going to happen for a long time. Um, so for now, it's like this. Uh, we're a human. Confirm. Choose your background. Where did your character grow up? Um, so each uh, race has three different backgrounds they can choose, although the, the city, the first one, is common to all races. Everybody can have grown up in the city. The other two are specifically race-specific. Let's go for aboard a silver Berlin. I don't, is that how you pronounce it? Berlin? Maybe. You were born and raised aboard a silver Berlin atop the vast salt ocean. You've raided and plundered since you were old enough to hold a boarding axe. Every background comes with a skill or an ability connected to it. So, in this case, it's swimming, which I already have from my character creation. So, increased skill, swimming. Your swimming skill is now at level 2. You learn to swim with razorback porpoises. You learn to fetch lobster pots and manoeuvre safely between the long tendrils of the dristing Alaniflec jellyfish. Confirm or choose your background again. Confirm. 
Um, so yeah, the, the background is a kind of a fairly minor thing, but it just gives you a, a little bit of flavour and an extra skill. Uh, and then choose your class. Last time I had this working for the fighter, but without the skills and abilities in there. They do all work now. So let's go for thief. You get a um, you get a stat. There is a primary stat associated with each different class, the same as there are for the races. So you have the possibility of choosing classes and races which match each other as it were, to get a double stat up on the same same stats. Um, or get something more diverse by getting different ones. I don't know that this is going to be uh, incredibly important, but I suspect that it is going to be advantageous to create a more balanced character, probably, uh, than it is to, to focus on one thing. Because it's hard to predict... Um, as a player, it's going to be hard to predict what sort of skills and abilities will be useful for particular jobs. And that's that's intentional. Um, every class has four different class skills, which normally can only be got by members of the class. There are some exceptions, like Tinker is fiddling with mechanical objects and dwarves can also get to that. Uh, but mostly for that. And your focused skill gets automatic points put into it. So it, it gets it gets to a higher level than other skills. Uh, let's go for Tinker. Uh, the Tinker skill is used to construct, modify and disassemble traps and other mechanical devices. You've gained a skill, Tinker. Choose a new ability. Um, again, some of these are common to all classes and some are class specific. So, um, in fact, I have three different types of abilities um, class abilities racial abilities and uh, and common uh, generic abilities these first two are generic and the second two are class ones uh, sense danger is good you have an almost supernatural ability to sense danger confirm and then finally choose a name this is the same as it was before I like come on not really Let's go for Sinberni. And we get a little summary of the, the character that you've created. Your name is Sinberni. You're a level one human thief. Your stats are strength one, dexterity two, intelligence two, luck one. You have these skills, medicine one, swimming two, tinker one. You have these abilities, sense, danger. Uh, this is not, this is plural. It shouldn't be. That's not going to change. I, it's, it's not beyond me to... To do this kind of stuff, but the way the game is constructed, I'm not going to start counting how many things you have and changing it. I should have done from the beginning, but um, shortcuts must be taken. So that's step one of the game. You create a character. Step two is going and adventuring. And this is where we start adventuring. Now, um, I have been working on this today and trying to create a sort of a generic um, adventure describing system where I write out the sort of general structure for the adventure and then the precise things you fight and events which happen and places you go get generated randomly and that's cool and fun but also time consuming and I realized today that it was taking too much time so at the moment it's sort of half done and um, needs a bunch more work. I think that it's time to abandon it for the time being, um, work on more important things, and then hopefully come back to this and make it better now. I will um, go through a couple of these. They are verbose and uh, possibly got mistakes in, so we'll see. Uh, yeah, like verbose, this... It, it shouldn't be as long. This was like the first one I wrote and I wanted to get a lot of different examples and things. Sorry, I don't know. Yeah, it's too long. Um, it's I, I wrote it long intentionally because I wanted different examples of things that happened to help me write the other ones. Uh, but needless to say, it's uh, I'll try and cut these down to about half of what's there. Uh, because like I say, we're still in the introduction to the game. Um, but anyway... 
So, it was time to set Grand Adventures, which direction you head. You joined a caravan heading south towards Glemdrot. Glemdrot? At the Caravanserai in Hobbers Falls, you fought a nest of ghasts and discovered an unusual basket. You left the caravan at the sepulchre of Nimborn and headed west. You fought off multiple ambushes by the bloodright bandits and crossed the shallow waste onto the vest glorious plains of such. At the cairns of Walla, you caught a glimpse of Uther the Ready and pursued him for seven leagues, fighting off the occasional attacks by Hyle Hinds and Bile Beasts. At El Eldelray, you descended into the Black Mech dungeon where gloom encompassed you. You were nearly caught in a rotting gas blast after triggering a fume trap, but eventually retrieved the fabulous treasure of Sindred McNeish, the crown of Espadril, the purple coronet, and turned back. You took the sire road north and took your rest at Sindred Folly. Here you met Maximus, a curious character, who talked a tall tale and entertained you for several nights. Finally, you moved on and found your way home without further instrument, uh, incident. You gained experience. Um, so yeah, like, uh, like I say, this is this is too long, but the general idea is there. I've had a lot of fun doing this generic fantasy nonsense with silly names and uh, creatures with, yeah, obvious names, I guess. Um, it's it's a bit indulgent, um, but fun. Um, yeah, m mostly it works. Uh, I, like I say, I need to cut it down. I need to develop the system a bit, and hopefully, I'll I'll have proper time to do that. We'll see. Anyway, this is the important thing: leveling up. So, every time you level up, you gain some stats, and you get to choose some skills and some abilities. It depends whether it's an odd or an even level, exactly what happens. Um, but yeah, um, so we can improve some of the skills or we can get some new skills. Let's uh, let's get a new skill, Lore. Uh, oh, and there should be a skill description in there for new skills. I need to check where that isn't. Um, well, yes, I need to check that. Uh, level up again. Oh, that's nice, two levels up. You're now a level three thief, uh, thief. Uh, intelligence plus one, tinker is at two. This is your focus skill, so it's it's leveling up automatically. And choose a new ability. Um, so some of these were available before. These two I know, and maybe one of the others. Leadership. Again, ability leadership. You have a certain natural charisma where you lead others follow. Yeah, this is the description. This should have been available for the skills as well. I'm not sure why not. Leveling up complete. Eager for more adventures, you set off again. Where do you go? Uh, this is the only kind of properly complete one, so we, we've got to go to the Forlorn Keep. Um, on your way to the Forlorn Keep, you stopped in the picturesque little village of Van. The innkeeper tasked you with improving his ale recipe, and you obliged. Further on, at Casper's Mill, you fought a brood of Maya sprites and gained the enchanted silver groat of Shenanath for third. Arriving at the keep, you encountered a lone narworm nar and defeated it. You fought through countless hordes of wild norn and finally ascended to the upper chambers, where you came face to face with Philbin the Bloodwearer, last descendant of the mad King Mabel. After a bloody battle, you were victorious. From the still warm body, you claimed Vampert, Dagger of the Immortals. You took the short road home via Rill. Okay, we're getting sort of... Um, Fantasy versions of real place names here. Uh, via real, avoiding an attack by brigands of the dawn along the way. You gain experience. Level up. You're now level four, thief. And etc. etc. right? We're going to get some more stuff. Uh, go again. Southeast across the Thief of Knives. I'm not going to read all of this. It's similar to what we saw before and still too long. Level up again. Get some strength. Let's get nimble fingers. Level up again. Let's uh, improve medicine, level up yet again, and how about innocuous, leveling up, complete. You departed for home, on the way something terrible happened. So this is going to happen to everyone, at the moment there is only one written, so um, more to write here, an attack by the great Seymour. As you round, this is maybe like, I'm verging this bit on something that's like 
uh, possibly too much. So, you know, it's a fantasy adventure. So there's slaying and um, cleaving in twain and uh, still warm bodies and blood and stuff in it. Um, I don't want to go too far with all of that. And I wonder if this bit I've written here is a touch over the line of like something that is accessible to everyone. So we'll see. Uh, if you don't like um, people being ripped to shreds, I guess. Skip ahead a bit. Um, you departed for home. On the way, something terrible happened. As your bark round the horn of whispers, the waters darkened without warning, and all of a sudden, the boat was violently broken in two. You were thrown into the churning ocean, saw the hideous, coiled beast writhe beneath you, saw sailors shredded by cruel jaws, the waters bloom with their blood, saw others crushed, heard the crunching of bone alongside the screeches of torn wood. You survived, somehow, came to, bloodied and broken in the shallow waters of a cove. You were found on that beach, cared for, nursed back to health, and eventually made your slow way back home. And there's a consequence to all of this. You've gained an aversion of the ocean. You've gained deep fear of deep waters. You vow never to take a boat again. You decide the time has come for your adventures to end. Your coffers are replete and you can afford to retire and live out the rest of your days peacefully. So, yeah, this is the, the final step to creating the character, really, is whatever the bad thing that happens, it's going to have some negative effect on you forever. So, uh, this fear of the ocean is going to come in later in the story. And there will be a number of these to choose from. Um, I haven't decided what they'll all be yet. Um, that's, that's a high priority if, uh, to do soon. Um, but yeah, it, it'll it'll influence your character and it'll it'll cause problems and whatever later. Um, so that's 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 kind of it. That's the adventuring section. Let's see the character we created. Um, oh, it should have cleared the screen for that. So never mind. You are Sinbarni. I don't remember how I decided I pronounced that. Sinbarni. You're a level seven human thief. Your stats are strength two, dexterity five, intelligence three, luck two. You have these skills, law two, medicine two, swimming two, tinker four. You have these abilities, nimble fingers, innocuous leadership, sense of danger. And uh, that's it. That's, that's how your character will be at the beginning of the game. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm like pretty happy with the system I've created here. Um, it's taken longer than it should have done, um, and yeah, especially as it's not the the main thrust of the game. Mm, still, now I know what a character looks like, right? So these numbers are fairly representative. Certainly, the the total of these numbers is going to be the same for everybody. Uh, I can expect people to have somewhere between three and five different abilities and that's going to help me balance stuff and and do everything else so it was necessary to go through this this process of, of creating the character system mm, i have possibly gone a little bit overboard in the number of abilities and skills that are available but um i found that that was necessary to balance it out because every Every class and race had to kind of have more or less the, the same. And also to um, make it feel like you had enough options. In, a, in an early version, you were kind of only ever presented with two, two things to choose from at each, each leveling up point. And it, it was just kind of meaningless. Like... Um, I think leveling up is is fun, is as fun as the bits you do in between leveling up. And in this game, you don't do the bits in between, you just do the leveling up. So I want there to be choices. I want you to feel like you are shaping the, the character that you're making, even in quite a limited way, right? There's not enormous number of options and this is a very truncated experience. 
but uh, still, that's that's how it is right now. Um, so yeah, I think that's all uh, I had to talk about. It's only been a twenty-minute video. Goodness me, how do I manage to talk so much? Um, thanks very much for watching. Uh, there'll hopefully be another update video soon, and um, I'll see you then. Toodaloo.